This is Dune Talk, a DuneNewsNet.com production. Join us now for the latest Dune news, reactions, and lively discussions. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Dune Talk. This is going to be a special show, uh, so we're not going to be talking as much as news uh, today. It's going to be uh, fully uh, focused on an interview. Um, so yeah, we're, we're really excited to, uh, to, to bring you this uh this episode where uh, yeah, we're going to get some uh, interesting insights into uh, what went on to uh, some of the acting and creation of the movie. Uh, so this is Marcus, and I'm here today with Simon. Hey, everyone. I'm super excited about our guests. Um, I think it's a good way that we wrapped up our movie review part, and now we have someone that was involved in the production. Yeah, and so uh, as uh, I've been alluding to you, we have a special guest on, on today. Uh, we have uh, Richard Carter. So he's uh, known for a number of uh, film and uh, TV acting uh, credits. Uh, he's based in the United Kingdom. And uh, you uh, probably know him uh, f- most recently from the Harkonnen Trooper in the, in the scene where, uh, where there's the kidnapping of, uh, of Paul Atreides and, and Lady Jessica. And he's one of the, the, the three uh, troopers. And uh, uh, spoiler warning, but of course, you already seen the movie who gets uh, killed by, uh, by Lady Jessica. <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, Richard, I wanted to give a couple of... Uh, uh, a bit of time for, for you to int- introduce your, yourself, just to t- uh, tell our, our viewers and listeners uh, a bit about who you are. Yes, my name is Richard Carter. I'm from uh, the Midlands in the United Kingdom. Um, <clears throat> I'm a professional actor, and I have been for about six years now. Um, and it's gone pretty well. Um, I think uh, landing a part on June was um, a bit of a shock. Um, I kind of, I think something was trying to stop me turning up for the audition. I had a blowout on the, on the on the motorway getting there. I struggled to get there on time. And, yeah, it was a big thing because I didn't know it was actually due. You know, then when I found out, it was because I seen the original in 1984. And, um, you know, I was in two minds. Is this going to be good? Is this going to be bad? Um, but, Yeah. <laughs> So that's pretty much about it. That's um, pretty much my life. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so it's so really excited to talk, uh, talk Dune with you. Um, so yeah. uh, Simon, I'll, I'll let you uh, kick off a couple of uh, the questions that we have prepared. Cool. So um, how did you get involved in the project? I mean, it sounded like it was just a challenge to get to your audition. Yeah, it was just kind of, um, I actually, it was because it was, Pretty much all the audition was, it was a film with Jason Momoa. That was it, you know. <laughs> and obviously, Jason Momoa is well-liked in the UK. Um, so I thought, yeah, I'll make my way to London pretty, because obviously I live in the Midlands, the central of England. So I actually stayed in a hotel and actually left early. Um, had a disaster with my car. Um, couldn't get no help. Um, basically, the breakdown, the recovery in the UK gave, gave me an X amount of time. So I would miss the audition, but um, with a couple of help off, people, off two young guys helped me that got me on my way to London, and um, I was actually a bit inferior to some of the guys that were auditioning for June. Obviously, I didn't know it was June at the time, and I actually at one point thought, "Shall I just walk away?" Um, because obviously it was American accent; they all sounded good, mine sounded terrible. Um, so anyway, I pretty much walked in the room and I knew from everybody's face that I got the part. I don't know why. They were just like, oh. So um, <clears throat> um, so basically, they, they gave us the script 10 minutes prior and the kind of, because they were to obviously audition for um, Arkham, Arkham 1, Arkham 2, but basically combined the audition together and that script is slightly different from the one in the film. Um, so it was kind of switching over from being vicious to a crybaby, basically. And um, so it was actually killing uh, each other, not Lady Jessica killing anybody, it was each other. So it was that switch from being stabbing uh, the other trooper and breaking down into tears, which uh, Dennis Denny said to me, I was the best one. Um, 
so the part I, I had, it wasn't the part that I wanted. It was the other, the other part. But obviously, <clears throat> stepping forward, when I got to um, Budapest, Origo Studios, uh, met Denise, and you know, he said, "I've seen your audition tape." He says, "You was unbelievable. You know, you're better than everybody." He said, "Are you disappointed that you didn't get the role that you auditioned for?" I said, "Yes, yeah, slightly." And and he said to me, he "says Come with me. I've got to show you." Something. So when I walked around and seen um, a full size ornithopter, I was just like, "Oh my god!" He says, "You're going to be flying that," and I'm like, "Oh my god!" You know, it was ginormous. I've, I've never. I wish I could have took a photo of it. Obviously, you know, they're, they're cautious with phones and stuff. It was just mind blowing, and it, to this day, it's one of the best things I've ever seen in my life. You know, um, yeah, those I could keep going and telling you <laughs> loads of things. You know, um, but yeah, I, I was when I found out it was. I pretty much clicked. You know, when she said Lady Jessica, I was like. You know, get rolling back to when I was like a, a young lad. I thought, I know what this is. I know what this is. I was like, no way, you know. And I was praying for days, and I never heard nothing for about four or five days. I rang my agent and said, have you heard anything? She said, no, there's nothing. I'm like, oh. but I just got this feeling that I got it, you know. Then I got a call. It must have been about three or four hours later. She's, you've got the part. And I was like, yes. And, and yeah, it kind of, and actually, obviously meeting Dennis, and when he said that um, regarding my tape and stuff, which it's not so much the financial side, because obviously, you know, the, from the, you know, quickly from the financial side, it was, it was a good paid job, you know, but for a director like that to say to you, I was well impressed with your tape, blah, 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 blah that meant more than the money to me. Because um, obviously, you know, I've not done it for a long time. So these things are important to me, you know, into to any acting, maybe, you know, because um, that way it kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, puts you on their radar for future projects. You know, obviously David um, has worked with Denny's a few times, you know, so, you know, fingers crossed. Um, and on that one, because at the time there was, when there was filming it, there was talk of a TV series. I don't know if you know anything about that. Yeah. Um, but obviously, I, I, I presume that there isn't now. They're obviously doing a part two. Because um, we didn't know if we would be, all of us would be returning for um, the TV series. Because there was talks of it when it was on set, so from the producers. So, um, but yeah, that's not happened. So it's obviously part two. That's a beautiful story, just in general. I love it. <laughs> I love hearing that. That makes me so happy. Were you familiar with Dune? I know you said that you saw the 84 yeah, version. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, Sting was in the original, um, which obviously, I was a big fan of the, the police. He was obviously the lead singer of the police, and I was quite a big fan, fan of it at the time. Um, I think being, because obviously, I would have been about 10, 11 then when it came out. It was kind of a bit... Ahead of its time, I think I, I didn't really understand it, but you know, I did find it good. And it's like now I understand it more, as you know, as, as I'm a lot older. Um, I think it, June was alone was a <clears throat> you know, the, the, the novel and everything is like way ahead of its time, you know, it's like it's been written in the future and been taken back, you know, that's that's pretty much how I see you. So it was quite, quite an intelligent story, you know. I mean, I'm not a massive, like, crazy Dune fan, like a lot of people, but, you know, it is, you know, I do like it. And obviously now I'm in here, I've got to be, I'm so, you know. Um, yeah, so it's kind of, obviously, like, being in, like, having such a small part in Dune was kind of, I just kind of, like, written it off as a small, as a small thing, but um, the more, like, obviously, fans on, the sites and stuff because I've, I've got fans contacting me all the time and stuff you know asking questions which I don't mind helping helping them and answering the questions you know um it's probably a bigger thing than, than, I, than I thought you know so it's nice to be a part of it. it really is I'd like to be part of the second one but I don't think it's going to happen but you never know something might change
you never know. You might come back as Harkonnen Soldier 485, you know? Yeah, that's, that's it. And, and that's the thing. I mean, obviously, they took, um, when I'm not too up on photography and stuff, but they did take um, a lot of images of us to use in the film in other places, you know, which obviously we was paid for them to use our images elsewhere, you know. It's, um, I don't know too much about the technical side of it. Um, but going, I mean, going forward with this, with the sets, I mean, I see a lot of people like, especially on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram saying, oh, it's a lot of CGI. You'd be surprised how much is real, put it this way. Um, I mean, I've, I've seen virtually that Denny's did take us around virtually all the sets in Budapest and it's ugh, phenomenal. But you'd be surprised what's actually real, what they actually built. Um, virtually everything is they, they took over. I mean, I, I don't know if you're familiar, familiar with the Origo Studios, it's a ginormous place, and they virtually took it virtually all over. You know, there was bits of June at the side of buildings, you know, the whole car park was June. It was just, it was for miles and miles, and miles. Um, even in, in the internal hangars, you know, it was just. They'd even change the atmospheric um, air to make it feel like space. It was just unbelievable, you know. In one part we went into, can't remember what what it was in the film. Because obviously we we'll go back to 2019. I actually felt like I couldn't breathe, you know, inside. It felt like I was actually in space. And this is what Dennis wanted. He wanted it to be um, for real, basically, and. You know, he was so passionate about June. Even Timothy, I mean, Timothy was, he was living Paul's life. He was actually Paul. He wasn't Timothy. Um, he, you know, he, he was very focused. I mean, after working, you know, I've worked with a few big actors, you know, briefly, but obviously Timothy was so, he was kind of switched off. He was, he was Paul. He was, yeah, he's, I rate him. He's on my, my number one. I'm one of the biggest fans I am. He's such a nice guy um, and such a serious actor. Um, he wasn't one of, you know, he wasn't, he didn't sit there thinking, oh, you know, now it's this scene. He was ready. You know, he was constantly practicing. You know, he really wanted to be Paul, you know. So um, I feel, obviously I've seen a few articles of saying he was, you know, he was a bad actor to play Paul, but pers from a personal level, I didn't think he was. You know, obviously, Danny's seen. Obviously, when they obviously if they auditioned him, they must have seen something, you know, in Timothy to play Paul. Um, and I thought he was. I think all the it was cast perfectly, personally. Yeah, and it sounded like the, the, Denis already had the uh, Timothy Chalamet in, in mind for for a long time uh, yeah. before. <laughs> so yeah. sp speaking of uh, of Denis, so it sounds like you a, got a good amount of uh, interaction with uh, with the director. So so how how was yeah. it like working t together with, with him? Did did he give you a lot of direct uh, guidance? Like how involved was was he in the in the scenes when yeah. you were shooting? He was he was very. Um... Passionate. I mean, I think there's there's a scene in, in my way where actually I'm actually putting the, the ornithopter into Matt into where um, <clears throat> I can't think of the word autopilot, <laughs> and it just wasn't working on camera. We just couldn't, you know. And he was like, somebody was saying, "Oh, we'll have to leave it, Den Denny. We can't do it. We can't do it." And he says, "No, it's got to be done. It's got to be done." He says, "I've got to have this scene." So he did kind of struggle to try and make it look like it was going into autopilot. Um, and at a few occasions, he say, he's like, Richard, Richard, no, 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 no. And I, I said, look, I'm doing it. So he actually watched me do it, then watched it on the cat. And he says, I can't see you doing it. He says, we have to come up with, with another option to make it look like, you, you know. But these smallest details, he, he wanted right. Nothing, you know. And he, he did even say at some point, he said, Every scene has got to be perfect. Um, he said, I don't care if I've got to pay you another two weeks to stay here until we get it right. He says, I don't care. It's got to be right. You know, so he, that, this is, he was very passionate about it. And he could, from my side, you could see he didn't want it to fail. He wanted it to be perfect. Um, 
and even you know we'd say right let's try it like this let's try it like that um and even even if he was happy he'd go right let's just do two more just for safe sake so it was kind of i think there's a lot of footage mate there's a, a lot of footage for Gene. um and obviously saying that there is obviously a lot of cut scenes but i can't say anything about them so you know we have spent days filming scenes that are not in the film but obviously I'm not allowed to say what they are. Um, so, yeah, but on a, I've seen a few things on Twitter about a director's call. Then he's saying, no, it's not going to happen, it's not going to happen. But, you know, personally, I think it will, in all okay. honesty. I get the Stanley Kubrick vibe from Denis. Day. It has to be perfect in his vision. And I love that about him, that he's not going to rush and just be like, okay, well, that was good enough. I love hearing that. No, it had to be yeah. perfect. He said from a young age, he wanted to make a science fiction film that blew everybody everybody out of the water, you know, and that's from a, from a young age. So he, he said it's, it was 50-something he was in 2019. He said, this is it, you know. He said, so it's got to be perfect. So I think he was kind of telling me, uh, Charlie, um, Rebecca and Timothy pretty much so we kind of got into the groove and obviously he's probably told us the same to other actors to say this is his dream you know he's not just getting paid for it it's it, it's his dream film so I think he was kind of just putting his passion onto us making us try and be more passionate for the part and you know I've worked with a lot of directors I think Denny Denny's the most passionate I've ever ever worked with he's just he was so, to me, it was like he was getting a big prize at the end of it, you know. So, and hopefully he will. Hopefully he will. What Was it all him talking about what, what he wanted you to do or did he give you actually materials to look at? Uh, how, how did that happen well, in preparation? I think when he's, obviously, when I, when you know, obviously when I met Denny and he, he explained about the tape, he said, he said, you switch over from being a complete monster to a crybaby because I did actually cry on the audition. Um he said was just um, kind of kind of like that. And he said, that's what I want this, you know, I think 10 days we was there. Um, so going to costumes quickly, because it does kind of tie in. We had um, a Lycra undergarment, um, quite a canvassy uh, two-piece costume, then like rubber armour over the top. And the simple reason was that Denny's wanted us sweating for real. He said, <laughs> it can't be water. He says, you know, he says, uh, you know, the Harkonnen's not used to the, to the temperature. They're not, you know, they're not used to this planet. So he said, you've got to be sweating. And we were sweating. And I mean, like bucket loads, you know, dripping off us, the makeup was coming off. So they constantly had to have makeup artists there put in obviously the dark they shaved up our, our eyebrows off i mean i've got a bit of a mohawk that had to come off eyebrows were shaved um so you know completely hairless it was obviously our skin is was really white he said are you really sweating he went and, and i said to him yeah i am doing it because i kept doing that and he says good 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 he said that's what i want you know so this is how passionate he was he didn't want to spray water in someone's face to make it look like sweating he wanted us sweating you know, our bodies completely for real, you know. So you can imagine at the end of the day, them costumes weren't nice. So, which Rebecca wasn't too happy about, you know, because she got two big guys, like, dripping sweat next to us, <laughs> which I'd probably be the same, to be fair, you know. And I can't see that I'm sweating. I just look normal. Um, and it's strange to watch it looking through the glass of the ornithopter, and obviously it was filmed, you know, up off the floor. You know, because it's obviously the, the ornithops have lifted up on hydraulics into the, into, uh, the roof space, you know, and it was it, it was quite... The ornithops was... I mean, I could honestly say it was got to be about 60, 70 feet long, oh. you know, and lifted up 40, 50 feet into the air, you know, and it was actually... Because obviously... Um, I, nearly, I, nearly, I nearly spat some out there. <laughs> um, Obviously, it's coming. It was actually coming out of the, um, well, sorry, coming out, coming out of the grass. I'm, I'm still nearly saying it again. 
Uh, so we kind of coming out the ground um, into the roof space. Um, they had it on a kind of turbulence because obviously the explosions and stuff. So we kind of had it on a, on a turbulence when it was coming out. Um, so it did feel really real, you know, actually taking off. Um, so it was the same on um, when the death troop was pushed out the back. Um, they'd actually had a guy with a big blower kind of like blowing air. It was kind of a sucker. So, you know, so obviously the noise is, is that. So obviously when the, the rear cargo doors opened, from, from me flying the ornithopter, you know, it actually felt like it was actually being on a plane and, you know, in the back doors are, are opening, which made it seem really real as well, you know, which I probably think that kind of probably helped the actors as well. And this is how far Denny went. I mean, he didn't have to do that. You know, obviously the equipment must have cost a fortune just to get that effect, you know, to the back door. So there was kind of like there was no stone. Every stone there was no stone on turn. Everything was thought about, you know. So what was the entirety of the scene literally shot in that ornithopter? Like uh, with yeah, with the... yeah, it was all yeah, it was all shot, all shot there in in that yeah. Um, so obviously they had a the screen was quite hot, um, <clears throat> high up, and it was kind of in a circular form. <laughs> um, so obviously they could shoot. The shot stuff obviously from the ground upwards, um, on, then obviously inside, and they did have um, some bits of scaffolding to, to do any other bits, you know, can't really recall that, but most of it was kind of you know inside. And and obviously, on that scene, you'd be surprised how many people were actually in there, <laughs> um, because it looks like there's three or four, um, but there was a lot of people in there. You know, we could probably, probably talk in 20 people. Oh. And it appears, obviously, on, on the film, it's, it, it's, it looks quite small, but it isn't. It was, I was quite shocked how small it looked on the screen uh, when I went to the cinemas to watch the film. But it's actually ginormous inside. It's huge, you know. I mean, obviously, you've got camera guys, sound guys in there, uh, you know, stunt coordinators, um, a couple of stunt guys. Um, so there was quite a lot of people in there. Um, and obviously, just, just for safety reasons, obviously doing the fights. I mean, I do a lot of stunt fighting anyway, so it's kind of my stuff I did all, all myself. I know the, um, the Death Trooper, he had a stunt, a stunt double. Um, but yeah, it was quite... Uh, it, it was well built, you know. It was actually like the real thing, you know. Yeah. Um, so I could imagine it was quite expensive to make. So I would have liked to foot the bill for that, put it that way. <laughs> and when it came to shooting the scene itself, was was like the whole scene shot like uninterrupted or was it done in different sections? Like how, how long yeah. did the whole process take? I mean, we, we probably, it was it, it was kind of done in, in, smaller, in smaller sections, but obviously there was a few scenes different. Uh, obviously, like I said earlier, you know, Denny was... He said, right, let's try it like this, let's try it like that. So a lot of the scenes there has been recorded in different ways, you know. Again, like I said earlier about the original audition, it was um, one of the troopers killing the other trooper um, from Lady Jessica's voice, you know. But obviously they, they kind of changed that. We didn't actually film anything that way. But it was all filmed in different ways. Um, there's obviously... A few other scenes we, that we filmed, which had obviously been cut out. So I think in total, the film was for about eight days of that scene. So it's quite a long time uh, for filming that scene. But like I said earlier, then he said, I don't care if you're here another two weeks. It's got to be perfect, regardless of money and time. He said, I just want it right. So that's some serious passion, that is. I will admit that is one of my favorite scenes in the book. So I'm grateful that Denis was very picky about his vision. I also heard Denis mostly uses one camera on set. He doesn't do multiple angles. Yeah, it was. He, he did do just one camera guy, yeah. I think it's impressive that they flew you guys out there when they could have easily just done it in a yeah. studio. I'll tell, so I'll tell you the, the next story. They actually flew me out there 
for one day and brought me home in one day to the costume. I was picked up <laughs> at home at 5 a.m. in the morning. They picked me up. They took me to the airport, put me on a plane, flew me to Budapest, picked me up at the airport, drove me to the studios, tried my costume on, got me back in the car, took me back to the airport, flew back to the U.K., from the UK airport back home. I was back home 7 p.m. that night. Rockstar lifestyle. <laughs> no, absolutely. Uh, but I was absolutely, you know, I got home obviously leaving at 5 a.m. in the morning, returning at 7 p.m. at night. I was absolutely, you know. And and at the time, obviously, the weather difference here, it was quite cool here. And obviously, when we got to Budapest, it was like scorching hot. Um, yeah. So I'll tell you another quick story. So actually, when I flew back to Budapest to start filming, I there's a boot. I don't know if you're familiar with Budapest Airport. You actually it's basically lower down, and obviously the main circuit. So you have to go up in escalators to get out. So as I'm coming up on the escalators, there's like 20 people pointing at me. Like that. I thought, oh no, what's this? <laughs> so and anyway, as soon as I got to the top, there were people everywhere. everywhere with um, like books, and they're saying, uh, You're saying June, June. I was like, How do they know? Because obviously, it's not on it's not on IMDb or anything like that. And they'd actually got a sheet of paper with all the cast on of June. Um, obviously, my photo was on there, so I had to kind of sign a few autographs, which was quite nice, but kind of outside the airport, people coming over because there was a lot of English people in the game. Who are you, mate? Who are you? And I go, oh, it's nothing, mate. Don't worry about it. Then then the police came over and they go, what's going on? I thought, oh, no. And I just, you know, I said, look, we're just filming out. Oregon. He's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so. But they, 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 they seem to be really appealing for June in Budapest. The, a lot of, a lot of the groups on Twitter, I think, are people that originate from Budapest. So it, it is, it's, it's really big in Budapest, June. You know, obviously it is in the States. Um, but Budapest is, yeah, they're just really mad for it. Going back to the scene itself, it sounds like it was pretty intense and a lot of attention to detail. Like, like if you look back at like the whole process, what, what was most surprising to you about like filming that scene? Um, I think surprising, I think probably how long it took um, for what it was. But obviously, again, even though I said earlier it was quite a big space, but it kind of wasn't, if that kind of makes sense. Because obviously, when you got the camera guys in there, and obviously Rebecca and Timothy in there, and Charlie was in there, um, it was it was quite difficult to obviously try and shoot that, especially when there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of action. Um, so... And obviously, because of that, I think there was obviously a lot of takes where Denny weren't happy with things. Um, so I was quite surprised how a lot of it was small, it had to be filmed in small snippets, you know, and keep moving around and moving everybody about. Well, obviously, you still needed these people inside of there to make, you know, to make things work. You know, on a lot of scenes, the lighting had to be constantly changed all the time, um, you know, tested and filmed, and obviously, you know, Denny weren't happy with that. Um, so it was a lot, a lot went on for, for, you know, for a small scene, even though when we filmed it, it didn't seem like a small scene. It seemed absolutely ginormous, you know, which obviously there's a lot of stuff we did film that isn't, in, isn't in the film. Um, so it's kind of that, it's, it's difficult because I can't really remember looking at the film now, I think, God, we, we filmed loads more than that, you know, so, and when you like say when you watch it and you watch that scene and you think, you know, we was there ten days, that's it, you know. But obviously, a lot gets cut out, a lot gets you know moved about. So it's a long part. I think people don't realise how long a lot of films that take to shoot, you know. And how how was it like uh, shooting this the scene across from two huge stars? So of course you're there with uh, Timothy yeah. Chalamet, you're there with Rebecca Fer Ferguson. That must have been quite an interesting experience. Yeah, I mean, I didn't, obviously at the time, I knew who Rebecca was, but Timothy, I was just, I didn't really know, until I did some research, and I was like, oh my God, 
And I didn't really speak to him much over a couple of days. So when I did speak to him, he did actually come over to him and we started chatting. And he said, uh, he put his hand out, shook me hand, and he went, hey, man, he said, i seen you on WWE. And I went, you didn't, mate. He said, i seen you fight The Rock. I said, you didn't, mate. And uh, he just looked at me, gone out, and he said, I did. I said, you didn't, mate. And I said to him, look, you know, I'm from the UK, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and he was just in shock. So the next day, he, he came over to me and, he, you know, it was kind of like, it was like play fighting. And he, was, he says, come and says, come on, man, show me some moves. And I, was, I said, I'm not a wrestler, Timothy. He says, and, and he wasn't having none of it. He was having none of it, you know. So I think because obviously David's in the film, he was, and obviously when you've got big guys with bold heads walking about, I think he just presumed that, you know, that I was a wrestler, but he was convinced he'd seen me in WWE. And to this day, even at the end of the 10 days, he was having none of it, you know. And he said, good luck with the rest of it. I, just, I give up. I give up. But uh, he's such a nice guy, you know. Um, he's he just so, He was so passionate about June. It's unbelievable. I've never met somebody so passionate about a film, a character. You know, he was so focused all the time and with regards to Rebecca um, she's absolutely fantastic lovely you know we actually, we actually became friends from it and um, she'd done because my daughter was a big fan of um, The Greatest Showman she did a, a big sign poster for my daughter and she actually did a video for my daughter as well which is very nice for a, a, a 10 year old girl to have from a big uh, Hollywood star, you know, and and she she was good about it. I mean, she, when she signed a poster, she mentioned me. When she did the video, she mentioned me, you know, and it was fantastic working with her because we did, like, kind of connect, you know, we had, we had a bond and pretty much doing that small scene, even though we kind of shot scenes where we were just kind of sitting next to each other uh, on the copter when they were filming scenes at the back. Um we kind of like kept together a lot of the times. I think that was just to keep um, that bond for when we, for, you know, when it comes to our scene, because I kind of spent days of the talking and stuff. When we come to doing our scene, I felt really comfortable with it, you know, um, because obviously I had to lean over and drip sweat on that, which isn't, uh, you know, I was quite nervous about it. She was all right. And obviously, uh, kind of picking her up a manhandler because obviously the scenes are shot there was a few scenes where I've actually pinned her against the side of the ornithopter and there was a concern about me hurting her and um, I mean I'm quite a big guy so it was kind of you know when I was thrown it you know I could hear her back going but she was all right you know she's she's tough as boots she really is you know um, but uh, I didn't want her to kill me that was the thing <laughs> she wanted and she said, hold no, no, you know, I said to her, just go for it. Just push me against, you know, uh, the side of the thought, to, don't worry about me. I mean, obviously, there was a bit of a concern from the stunt guys about me wearing padding and stuff. I said, no. I said, you know, you know, I'm happy. And she was a trooper. She like proper, it went to perfection, you know. She definitely was a character and she put force into the scene as well. You know, she wasn't like Nambi Pambi and think, oh, you know, I'll be careful. She was just like, <clears throat> you know, take it, you're having it kind of thing. So, and it was really good, you know. And obviously when I got knocked down, she, you know, she picked me up, you know, she said, you're all right? I said, yeah. And we kind of did, We, you know, we, we made a great bond. And I made a friend, to be fair, um, even Offset. Um, yeah, she, she, she's such a nice person. It's... Um, She's probably one of the nicest people I've ever met in my whole life. Again, another one dead passionate about June. She was so focused on it, you know. Even offset, she was she was Lady Jessica. Um, and it's so weird. Obviously, they're super experienced actors, and to see that is it's probably a good lesson as well for me to see how these bigger stars um, act in these films, you know. So I could honestly say. I've, I've learned a lot from, from both of them too, just doing such, you know, such a small scene. 
Um, but I've seen a lot progress over them 10 days of being on set and, and just learning, you know. Um, because I never, I never, you know, I never asked for advice about acting or anything like that. I, I pretty much just use my eyes to watch how to do things. Um, yeah. So that's that was a good experience on itself, and you know, probably much to this day, it's no, it's not for me. It's a, it, that June was a massive experience. It wasn't a money experience. It was a massive experience. Um, you know, personally as well, and. Kind of feel by doing that, it's probably helped. It's what well, it has helped my acting career along as well. Even though it is again such a small, obviously I keep saying it's such a small scene. Um, it kind of paves the way for me to be more confident doing other things as well. You know, but, it might be a small scene, but in, in the grand scheme of Dune lore, it's a major scene. It's yeah. where stuff starts really happening. Random question: When they were using the voice, obviously Rebecca didn't project that voice. Was oh, it no. just her? Was it just her normal voice, and all of it was done in post, or did she try yeah. using a voice? It was just just a normal voice. It was kind of, I mean, pretty much on the scene anyway. She just she just had attitude. Once the camera was flicked on, she just had attitude, you know. And then obviously, when the camera turned off, she was just like. Gone back to you know, gone back to Rebecca again, and it was it was such a good. It was so it was so cool to see you know, but obviously same with me. Obviously we're there chit chatting like you know like we are we got, us guys are, and to just like, you know, be like that you know. So I kind of followed suit you know when she was like that than I was. Um, so it was kind of like yin and yang. We was like dead good friends and we hated each other. We wanted to kill each other, you know. And, yeah, so she didn't – it was just a normal voice. Obviously, our voices were – obviously, obviously we spoke normal and obviously they just switched everything around when we were talking, which I wasn't – didn't know they was going to do that, to be fair. So, But I'm glad they did because it's definitely um, – it's, it's something different, um, especially for, like, uh, show reels and stuff. It's obviously we have, you know, I've got scenes of me talking. Obviously, that having that, it's just like, God, you know. Um, so if people don't understand or know anything about June, then they're living under a rock. That's all I can see because it's um, it's 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 a big deal um, in the UK. I mean, I've spoken to a few people about June and say, "What's that?" And they're just, "What's that?" It's like it's all over the like billboards everywhere, you know. It's on the front of newspapers. It's like it's such a massive deal, uh, June. But there is still people out there that've got no idea. Um, and, and another quick question, another quick answer. I'm going to say before I forget is my expectation of film was like it was a lot better than I thought it would be. I couldn't believe how, you know, when I went to watch it to the cinema, I couldn't believe how good it was. I could honestly say it's, it's one of the best films I've seen for a long, long time. I'm not just saying that because I'm in it. So, <laughs> And it sounds like it was an amazing experience and especially impressive because uh, it sounds like you, you basically did your own stunts, uh, basically. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like I said, they, don't, they film stuff in different ways. <laughs> I mean, obviously, originally from the start, it was, it was a completely different scene, you know, it was kind of changed around to so the kind of I think it obviously then he's just just changed it. He's obviously made it different. Obviously we did film it in different ways as well. But obviously he's just gone with um whatever he's you know produced into the film. I mean I, th I think on my scene there was a version where it was quite abrupt, you know, where I just kind of jump out and I'm kind of like really picking Rebecca up and pinning her against the wall. But he's obviously decided not to use that. Um, it might have been. It's difficult to... Obviously, when you're, when you're acting something, from me jumping out of the chair, it was kind of... I kind of... From what I can remember filming, it was probably... From a normal person, they would probably thought, oh, my God, who's this nutcase? 
So I think he's probably probably thought, Shh, can't put that in. We're gonna have to get something a little bit tamed down a bit. Um, but I presume he's obviously trying to keep the balance of all the characters yeah. instead of just having one. Somebody who's like really abrupt might be not that easy to to penetrate. Um, so yeah, I'm not too sure, but obviously use what, what you know what they've had to use. So. And in terms of the, the immersion in the scene, so like uh, basically you were seeing all these, these sets that you, you, you described and like actually filming on the ornithopter itself. Did, did you also get some sort of like explanation and like how you should be piloting and like, uh, you know, yeah. those type of details? Kind of, yeah. See, I've, I've got to be careful what I'm saying here. Because <laughs> obviously there was, a, there is a scene obviously that's not in. Um, so obviously, you know, I was told like, you've got to fly like this, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. Um, so yeah, it was kind of where so everybody was outside, kind of watching. Um, so basically, I've instructions off Denny, and obviously the the filming from the ground. So I can't, unfortunately, I can't say too much about that, that actual bit because it's not actually in the film. So no worries. I'll be having somebody <laughs> on my case about that. So, but that's something that did take a bit of time to film. So you know, it has been removed from you know, obviously not put that into the film. Right. So quick question for you. You were talking about how they took a bunch of pictures. They probably did some 3D rendering. Do yeah. you know if you're in or if did you film any combat scenes? No, it's, it was, we pretty much filmed what's. It was just around the thought that there was nothing, really anything else. Um, obviously, the initial fights, the initial fight scenes, um, we did over with 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 the stunt guys. Obviously, what, um, with Rebecca, obviously that a, a stunt double for Rebecca and for Timothy. So we kind of practiced with them, um, probably like for, just for a day before, just to get you know just to get the scenes right. But obviously they didn't actually use them in the end. To be fair, anyway, um, because obviously they just kept changing the scenes around. So I think Denny just kind of like went with it and see how they went and obviously they did obviously they had the, the, the stunt doubles on 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 set constantly if he felt that they needed to be used um but pretty much went pretty smooth i mean safely as well you know denny was just kind of trying to do everything kind of safely you know but i think because we were constantly shooting like and shooting and shooting and shooting everything was kind of running smoothly all the time. So when it comes to shooting something, there wasn't really any a mass panic if something was going to go wrong or anything like that. It was just kind of just, it just everything went smooth, you know. And obviously, Denny, even with Rebecca, you know, and Timothy, you know, he said, well, can we, you know, I want to try it like this. I want to try it like that. So he kind of went from all avenues with everything, you know. This is what I said. He filmed a lot for Jim, a hell of a lot of stuff. So I think it's hard to try and bring people back and reshoot something if, if you're not happy. So I think he knew that, he, that the more he had, the better the film was going to be. So he kind of, he was very advanced with everything. Did you keep anything from the set? Like, well, no. Little... no? Just, just, just memories, unfortunately. As, as much as I wanted to, it's... Um, yeah, it was just, I think because it was so much to see um, of June, it, it was just, there was so much. It was just unbelievable, you know. It was crikey. It's just like actual mind-blowing, you know. And it's, and this is what, you know, people say, oh, it's all CGI, and they say it's not. You, you'd be surprised, you know. There was, there was obviously blue screen and green screen and stuff, but a lot of the sets of June are actually real, you know. And, I mean, the sand dunes that they had uh, at Origo on the front were for miles. It's just unbelievable. It's actually like being in the desert f for real. It sounded like you actually landed on Arrakis, the yeah, whole experience. definitely. 100%. Um, it, did, it, did feel, it did feel like Arrakis, you know. Like I, I said, there was... Um, 
uh, Denny took us into one building where they had um, they actually changed like the the air density, and it had, when you walked in it you could slightly not not breathe, you know there was mist in the air and it was just felt like I was in space. It just felt like you walked onto another planet, you know. Um, he did say the reason behind it. I think he he was trying to create space for real. That's what he was trying to do. He's, he's, he's put, he put so much into it. it was, you know, it's unbelievable. It's, um, I don't think the man actually slept. I think he was just like, um, just work, 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 because it was just, it was, there was never any relaxing time. There was never, it was like June, 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 June. That's all it was, you know. And um, that's some serious pa passion. You know, he absolutely, <clears throat> he was mad for it, you know. And, and, and like I said earlier, a lot of explanation. He was like, you know, this is my dream. You know, I want it to be right. You know, I've dreamt of this since I was a small boy. So who am I to argue with a man like that? Yeah, and you you touched on the the costumes uh, earlier. Like, how much of time actually went into like you know getting into the costumes? I, I don't know, makeup, uh, hair, that sort of stuff. Yeah, I mean, obviously um, the makeup was wasn't too bad. The costume was. We didn't have to like kind of get into. Co we we kind of had to put a lycra suit on, then just stay in the lycra suit. Excuse me. Then they'd come in informal. It's probably like. 30 minutes before to get everything on because it did take quite not so much for the for the canvas like trousers and jacket you know with the armor and stuff and the boots with quite time consuming to get on um so obviously it was all in uh, air conditioned we all had our own room all air conditioned rooms so then obviously when you walk out into the heat in in budapest it was like you know so i was having to walk uh, quite a bit down, you know, on set and stuff. And this is when you start sweating, you know. And when you walk in, and then he's like, "Oh, you sweated, good." <laughs> we're, you know, we're just like, "Oh God." Um. So yeah, that was quite a, a hard thing, you know, to kind of constantly sweating, you know, all the time. But this is what he wanted, you know. And it's strange for twenty people to be in a small confined area. And you've got three guys pouring with sweat and the rest are just like in shorts and t-shirts, you know, drinking pop. And we're just being made to drink water to make us sweat more, you know. Um, but this was the point. And I think someone actually did say, can't you just spray him with water? He was like, no, 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 no. Let me tell you. So this is how passionate he was. It has got to be for real, as real as possible. I'm definitely going to look for that sweat in the 4K release. Yeah, I, I, I can't, I can't, I've tried, I can't see it, but trust me, you know, I mean, obviously at one point when I leant over Rebecca and it was dripping off me onto her, and I thought, oh my God, she, you know, then he said to her, look, he's going to drip sweat on you. And she went, it's fine, it's fine, no problem. But she probably would be been disgusted by a complete stranger, but because obviously, like, you know, we formed quite a good bond, you know, as I said, even offset, um, it made it really easy to film, you know, to work with her and film with her, you know, even off off the set, you know, we, we spoke about life and everything in general. So it made it really easy to film with, her, even when I had to lean over, stand in that position, like, you know, Den Dennis is handing out a few pointers, I'm dripping sweat on her. She's like, and I'm like, I'm sorry. She's like, no, it's all right. It's all right. I would be mortified if that happened to me. If someone dripped sweat on me, I'd be mortified. You know, but yeah, like I said earlier, she's a proper trooper. One question I have for you. In Star Wars, a lot of the stormtroopers or TK, whatever, were you listed as Harkonnen soldier with a special number or were you just Harkonnen soldier? Number two, and I've... Um, <clears throat> Because I because I liked it so much, I've actually um, I've got a camo. I've, I've ordered a jumper from America, um, <clears throat> and on the front I've got Arrakis O2, and on the back I've got Harkonnen O2 on the back as well. So a few people will know what it means, and a few people won't. Because um, originally for the auditioning, it was Trooper One and Trooper Two. Trooper One had a, <clears throat> I think like one or two more lines. 
so obviously, you know, I was aiming for that. But obviously on the audition, they did um, them together pretty much, basically. So, and obviously when I got the second trooper, I was a bit disappointed. So obviously when I got to Budapest, met then he, and I, you know, he said, I've seen your tape. He said, are you upset? I said, well, he said, but I couldn't give that part to anyone else. He said, because you outperformed everybody on that scene. So he said, right, he said, let me sh come and, he said, and push, you're going to be flying this. And when I walked around this corner and seen the ornithops, I thought, oh, my God. It's like all my Christmases have come at once, you know what I mean? Yeah. So obviously when I spoke to a couple of my um, sci-fi buddies on the evening, I told them, and they were like, I'm well jealous. You know, and a lot of them said, you're lying, you're lying. I said, I'm not lying. I said, said Where, where's the photos? I said, you can't take photos, mate, you know. Um, so, yeah, it was – I accepted that, and I think I got the better part. I would have been disappointed if I'd got the other part. You know, I would rather have been actually flying a machine in June than actually not. Um, but, yeah, you know, I was I was happy. So I think things happen for a reason sometimes. Yep. So – yeah, that's uh, yeah, so, sounds like an incredible experience. So yeah. before we we go, I, I did want to give you some some time to talk about a bit more about uh, your upcoming uh, projects because I know that you've been doing acting, but uh, you also uh, have some directing uh, credits uh, for Shooters Hill that seems to be in production. Can you tell us a bit about yeah, that? That's kind of um, took a bit of a bit of a backbench, obviously. You know, with the coronavirus, um, so the, that's pretty much. Um, about two brothers, you know, in the east, east end of London, um, kind of um, my character goes away because he's done some nasty, naughty things so, and he kind of comes back, he kind of has to clear up his brother's kind of kind of mess. Um, but I mean, obviously, it has been, it has been backbenched. It's all pretty much a script's been done and everything. Um, characters, everything's prepared for it. But obviously, with coronavirus, it's, you know, we've kind of just got to, pretty much wait for it to, you know, calm down. Um, because obviously, especially around London, there's a lot of restrictions in places. So it is, it is a bit difficult. Um, and off, off, the straight, off the back of June, I've got, um, I've just signed a contract for a film, um, filming in New Zealand, which is going to be a science, a science fiction film. Obviously, I can't really say too much about it. Um, you know, who's in it, what there is going to be some famous people out of science fiction films in it as well. <laughs> uh, not June, something else. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I've just signed a contract for that. Again, a small a small kind of part, but something similar to, to what I've done, a bit, quite a lot more dialogue, though. Um, and I've got another film, local a local film to me, um, based on a true story. That's about um, corruption and truck drivers. And I think hopefully they've got Stephen Graham that's going to be in that as well. So I think off the, off the back of June, it's it's I've been offered some decent decent parts. So which I was told, you know, I would do, but I was just concerned because it was such a small part that um, I won't really get anything from it. But uh, I kind of well, it obviously it is working. It's it's paying off. Um, and I've, I've Obviously, categorising of agents, I've moved up to a bigger London agent now, so I'm hoping that the work is going to be slightly better, which it is. You know, auditions, quality, the productions are working on it is better. Um, but, yeah, I'm not really seeking fame or anything or money. It's just um, just something I enjoy doing. Um, I, unfortunately, I get to play the baddie all the time, but I, don't, I quite enjoy it. You know, you know, I quite enjoy it, you know, if I get to throw my weight weight about and do a bit of action, but you know, I'd like to do more, but obviously focus more on trying to do some more serious acting as well, which is which is coming in slow. It's not a you know, it ain't kind of a race, but I seem to be getting on the right paths, but the right path. Um, but I, I think I can only like you know, thank Denny for that. It's you know, and the opportunity because if I don't, if it wasn't for June, I don't think, um. <clears throat> 
I'd get half the chances, you know, that I kind of do. Yeah, that's, that's, that's really exciting. So th th thanks, thanks so much for talking to us and uh, the evening uh, of, of your time uh, was uh, yeah, like great, great getting all those, uh, these insights uh, into the, into the filming of the movie and that, that, that scene uh, just uh, yes, so, so much, so much great information. W where can people find you uh, online? I know that you, you are on Twitter. Yeah, I'm on Twitter or Facebook. Um, I'm uh, Richard A. Carter on Facebook. So Sam, people can add me. That's fine. If you want to ask me any questions, you know, I've always got time for people. You know, I'm not arrogant or anything like that. If you want to know anything about June or anything or anything, you know, just add me on Facebook or Twitter and just ask the question. You know, I don't I don't mind ans answering it. You know, I'm, I think I've had nearly 1,500 questions about June. <laughs> since its release and that's not I'm not exaggerated either but I'm happy to you know connect you know to connect with people yeah so let's let's go ahead and uh, and and sign off uh, Simon where can people find you I'm on social as Dowdy first initial last name Richard thank you so much for the insight of um something that we're we're, we're your two fanboys. Me and Marcus are definitely, and everyone else that you know watches and works on the site on the podcast. Uh, it's a pleasure, and I'm I would love to meet you in person. Thank you for right. thank you for making my favorite piece of literature come true, and especially one of my favorite scenes. That's okay. <laughs> thank you. It's great. It's been great speaking to you. I really appreciate it. And it's, you know, it's, you know, I'd love to meet you guys. Really would. And this was uh, Marcus Gabriel, your editor in chief at dunisnet.com. And you can find me at dunisnet on Twitter and Instagram. And we have a, a lot more coming on, on Dune Talk. So this is, uh, yeah, uh, only the beginning. We, we will be taking a little bit of a break in, in late December, but in 2022, we're going to be uh, keep going every week. So yeah, look, look forward to continuing the journey with all of you. We hope you've enjoyed Dune Talk. Remember to like, subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when the next episode drops stay tuned to dunenewsnet.com and add us to your social feeds be the first to hear breaking news and reviews